Chapter 193 Part 2 of 5 If there aren't any other memories, I am. I guess there weren't, because her eyes flashed and things flickered. We appeared among a group of night guards overlooking a foggy field. It took me a moment to realize we were at the war games. I guess this is another formative moment for Shiny and Cadence, hey. Indeed, Reason said. More Shining armor, though. I turned around and finally beheld Cadence. She was standing with Reason and Pride. So you finally show yourself. Who are you, then? Passion. Cadence happily replied. This was the first time in a long time you felt me, wasn't it? I guess so. And yet, I was pretty proud of what happened, too. It did, of course, knock Shining Armor down several dozen pegs, Reason said. An action that had consequences. Consequences or not, I'd say it was well worth it, Pride said. The look on his face when he saw you appear in front of him was fantastic. So, do we have a memory for this one? I ask. We have two. Passion said. She shot forward and hugged me, kicking us into the first one. It was shining armor and cadence in a forest glade. I had a feeling that's not where they actually were, but the stupid tree thing was acting up again. Shiny looked distraught and cadence seemed surprised. What are you doing here so soon? Cadence asked, which made Shiny flinch a little. Nav just left for the games a couple of days ago. And why isn't he with you? Her husband's ears fell. The games aren't over. Oh? Then what? Oh. Are you okay? Physically, yes. Thankfully, we were all under a spell that meant we couldn't really be harmed. Although your favorite human did his best to test the bounds of it. Oh no. What did he do this time? Shiny sighed and shook his head. I don't even know where to start. Hey, I don't even know the half of it myself yet. The last thing I saw before. He appeared out of nowhere, literally bucking nowhere, pouncing at me. I tried. He was on me so quickly there was nothing I could do. Cadence swooped in and hugged her useless butt slut. Well, it's over now and you're okay. I'm physically fine. But that... This will be a defeat like no other, Cadence. You don't understand what just happened. I doubt Captain Midnight even understands half of what happened and she was there. Cadence pulled back, though she kept her hooves on him. You aren't making sense. Are you sure you're okay? Shiny sagged and closed his eyes. After a few seconds, he took a deep breath and looked back up. Navarone utterly annihilated my army. First, he almost completely wiped out our scouting patrols, so we got no information. Second, he targeted my officers in the night. Third, he led a group of disorganized troops who were chasing him into an ambush. Finally, he slipped through the shield again to target me. I don't know what's happening now, but I doubt it's anything good. That's, interesting. I thought you said he knew nothing of war. He said he knew nothing about war. He proves himself once more a liar. Nav eats meat. Shiny blinked. Did you know that? I did. What does that have to do with anything? He's a predator, honey. Luna says they're naturally better at fighting and war than ponies. I have trained in the art of war since I joined the academy. I don't care how much natural talent he might have. There's no way he could have just naturally beat me. He's lying about his past. Of that, I have no doubt. Twilight says his name isn't really Navarone, but he still hasn't told her the real one. Pack your bags. Skyla isn't staying under his roof for even one more night. Oh? Are the assassins finally handled? I can protect you just fine on my own. That made Cadence frown. Don't make me point out the obvious, honey. What? For one, you can't just abandon your duties as the captain of the guard to false at me and Skyla all day. For two, how many different ways have ponies found around your shield? None. 
Oh? So Nav just happened to find his way into your base. That made him grit his teeth. And at the tournament, did you not have your shield up when he got to you? His eyes narrowed. Of course, Chrysalis found an alternate means through it, but her path went unhindered until Nav and I showed up to save the day. Do you seriously think you're safer around that thing than you are around me? Oh, absolutely not. He actually threatened to hit me less than a week after I got here, but in hindsight, I did kinda deserve it. That's it, I'm arresting him. He jumped up to storm out, but Cadence grabbed him with magic and floated him over to her loving grasp. Nav is a liar, a rogue, and infuriating at times, but he's not evil and he doesn't deserve jail. I know this defeat was bitter, but you must take it as an opportunity to learn. Once you find out how he gets through your shield, you can find a way to plug the gap. I know exactly how he does it. It's that cursed magic ring of his. I don't know why Celestia let him keep that evil thing. Celestia did not. Luna did. Of course. Shiny sighed and finally relaxed in his wife's grasp. Even knowing how intelligent he is, a part of me will always think of him as animalistic. There's something feral about him. Doesn't it just pull you in? Cadence asked. He's such a mystery. A dangerous mystery. Shiny finally pulled away. It's time to come back to Canterlot, Cadence. Abandon this fascination of yours. I know that's why you really wanted to come here. Nada. I wanted to be safe, remember. And I'm not supposed to be concerned at all that only a few months ago, you were throwing yourself at him. With your permission. It has since been rescinded. Besides, his maid has his interests at the moment. After a second, Cadence sighed. She brags about it all the time. Brags about what? Getting taken by that thing? As if that's anything to be proud of. Well well, Cadence said with a small grin. Perhaps you should give me something to brag about, then. With pleasure, Shiny growled. We're going to take a two-minute cut, Reason said. Just like that, we appeared in the living room of my house at the Everfree. Shiny was very angrily storming out, which made me assume he didn't last very long at all. Either that or he couldn't get it up at all. Before he could get to the door, the other me opened it from outside. Time froze and the other me went black and white. No. What is he doing here? I mean... I kinda lived here, I said, crossing my arms. Was killing me once not enough? Have you come to finish the job? Sweet Celestia, just look at those teeth. Sure enough, the other me still looked like a night guard. I didn't want to be around Luna long enough for her to remove the enchantment, so I just kept the look. Wait, how is he here? I know my army is essentially headless but surely the games couldn't already be over. Surely, he was struck down after targeting me. At least my soldiers got vengeance against this monster. Wow, hurtful. With that last smug thought in his head, Shiny brushed right past the other me without a word and started walking toward town. That ended the memory and put me back on the field of battle. Blossom was leading the ground army now, with me leading the air assault. Talk about a drama queen, I said. Shiny was such a baby. Pride cometh before the fall, Reason said. Very wise words delivered to ears that were not capable of listening, at least not then. His mind was too full of rage and bitterness. Defeat is a bitter pill to swallow, Pride said. Given that it was a complete and total defeat, it was even worse. Generally speaking, defeat means there's a lesson to be learned. I said. He chose not to learn the lesson and instead got all uppity and shit. It would be difficult not to, Passion said. Internal politics in Canterlot can be troublesome. Are you prepared for the next memory? Sure. One of her wings reached over to bop me. This time, I appeared with Celestia and shining armor. I don't know where we were supposed to be, but we were currently in a vast field of blooming cherry blossom trees. 
the petals were very distracting and I kept hearing echoes of laughter and conversations all around us. Thankfully, the main conversation drowned most of it out. I hope you understand why I find these reports, troubling, Celestia finally said. She sounded just disappointed enough to know she was only pretending. Of course I understand, Princess, he said. This was probably the most devastating defeat we've ever had. Not probably, Captain. Definitely. So I have to ask myself. Why did this happen? She paused a few seconds, either for effect or to see if he would speak up. When he didn't, she sighed and continued, but that's when I remember that I keep others around to answer questions like that for me. So tell me, why did this happen? Navarone. Celestia waited about ten seconds before tilting her head. You say his name as though it's an answer. Are you telling me that a single human is better than five hundred ponies in a war? Of course not. Then Navarone is not an answer. Why did this happen, Shining Armor? Why are the newspapers scorning my day soldiers? Why are ponies laughing at my army? Why do I have letters here from Chrysalis, Bloodbeak and even Jim Bucking Johnson mockingly offering my army training? When you tell a wolf to lead a pack of sheep, is it any surprise they all start acting like wolves? Shiny bitterly ask. The night guards are half feral, same as the monster who leads them. Did you read my report about how he struck me down? I did, Celestia said. And I have to say, I'm extremely impressed by his capabilities. What? He's an animal. He's a wolf among sheep, Captain, she said. And you will watch your tone with me if you want to keep that title. You may be a prince now, but this defeat is all I need to kick you out of the army entirely. As if what happened with Chrysalis wasn't enough. Perhaps it's time to put a wolf back in charge, after all. Luna's been pushing for it for a while now. I would never stand for placing Navarone in charge of the guard, Shiny very coldly replied. Nor would any of my officers. You don't have to stand for it. None of you would, in fact. She finally stood and leaned in very close to Shiny, who stood his ground. You would all hang for it. His eyes finally widened. Do you believe that failure should be punished? Well, what greater failure is there than losing your entire army with only twenty kills to show for it? And worse, surrendering like cowards before a larger force. It is entirely within my right to replace you with Navarone and replace any officers who dissent with whoever he pleases. The entire army would mutiny. Then it's a good thing we've proven that Navarone can defeat the entire army. You have twenty-four hours to have an answer to every single one of my questions, Captain. If you don't, you better have a resignation letter instead. You are dismissed. We got back into the main memory right as the battle was ending and the night guards were cheering. Man, what a bitch, I said. Somewhat justifiably, but still. Failure should be punished, Reason said. If this wasn't the wake-up call that Shining Armor needed to get his act together, then Celestia really would have been better off replacing him. I can't deny that. He didn't seem all too effective. Powerful, but not the best leader. Still, hanging seems kinda extreme. And losing your entire army isn't. Passion ask. Well, of course he lost his entire army, I said. He was going up against me. Pride and I high-fived again, since he knows what I'm talking about. So what's the takeaway from this? Your princess was pleased with your work, Passion said. You did exactly as she asked by humiliating shining armor. But in doing so, you made his life difficult. Am I supposed to feel sorry for him? I ask. And in making life difficult for him, you made life difficult for Cadence. Am I supposed to feel sorry for her? She's the one who married an idiot. You feel no loyalty to her. Passion asks. After all you've witnessed here, you feel no sympathy for her. Of course I feel loyalty to her and of course I'm grateful that she defended me. But if you want me to feel bad for winning the war games, I don't really know what to tell you. 
I've got a side with pride on this one, I did an excellent job. It isn't my fault Shining Armor was a sore loser and let things deteriorate with his wife because of it. The passion I felt during the games is a good part of why I'm so proud of it. This was the first time in a long time I did something so well that not even my internal demons could find fault with it. I'm happy with the way things turned out, even if it affected Shiny negatively. A reasonable response, Reason said. It isn't fair to ask you to feel regret for another's temperament. How closely are you related to the forms you take? I ask. Are you defending Shiny so much because he's your body's husband? I am merely asking questions, Passion replied. As is our role. At. The extra context for the war games was neat, but I don't see anything I need to take away from this. Maybe Shiny should try a coma of his own. Shining Armor had the willpower to change without needing one, my guide replied. Are you prepared to move on? Yes. When we appeared this time, it was in Celestia's bedroom. Celestia and past me were on the bed. Luna and Twilight were standing over us, both wearing, interesting expressions. I wasn't expecting him to choose that method to keep her asleep, Luna said. Both of their horns were lit up, so I assumed they had a way to make sure we wouldn't hear them. Seriously? Twilight asked. I assumed that would be his go-to choice. So, shall we? We shall. Luna's horn lit up and I teleported onto the floor. She eased into the bed next to Celestia and Twilight used magic to put her to sleep. Twilight's horn lit up again, making Celestia and Luna both light up. A moment later, Celestia's eyes opened and she teleported Luna away. That went better than I was expecting, Twilight said. What should we do with Nav? He'll be suspicious if he wakes up back in Ponyville. Leave him here. I'll send him on his way in the morning, with a suggestion to leave my beloved sister be for a month or two. Excellent. I'm going to go check on Celestia and make sure she's under the covers. I must admit, this idea of yours is impressive. I doubt it will end as you expect, but I think my sister could use a few days off. Would you mind sending me a few updates via Spike? I want to see how long it takes her to really start freaking out. Of course. Now, allow me to cuddle with my lovely human. It has been denied me for far too long. Twilight didn't say anything as Luna floated me back into the bed, but when I was secured in her hooves, Twilight cleared her throat. What, exactly, are your plans for Nav while he's here? Luna stared at the purple mare for an uncomfortably long time before she quietly said, cuddling. And then when he awakens, he will be sent on his way. And nothing else. What exactly are you implying, Twilight Sparkle? Luna very coldly asked. Nothing. I'll uh. I'll go check on your sister now. Twilight's horn lit up and she vanished. Luna sighed and snuggled me closer. I want nothing more, yet it wouldn't be right. I've hurt you too much to take advantage of you yet again, with that, her eyes closed and she fell silent. Well, that was slightly different, I said. I'll admit, this prank was a bad idea from the beginning. I should have forced Twilight to tell me what she was planning and I should have stopped it before it happened. All of that is true, Reason said. And yet not why we are here. Do you recall what else happened in this time? Well. Twilight was being haunted by Eri. I didn't realize it until later, though. I assume she had been following me since she was freed at the museum, then stayed and started torturing Twilight after I got kicked out. And I guess, more importantly, I almost stood Luna up. That would have been a super dick move that was only averted because Flo either talked me out of it or forced my mind to change. I would assume she used force, Rage said. Haven't heard that one in a while. You had a perfect chance for revenge on a target who did so much to hurt you. And you let it go to waste. I finally turned to face them, since watching Luna stroke my body was getting weird. I recognized that hurting Luna wouldn't undo what was done to me and, while it might have made me feel better, 
it would only needlessly escalate tensions between me and the very powerful sisters. I still think the move I made was entirely justified, but I'm happy that Flo talked me out of it. I'd be considerably less happy if she forced me out of it. If you think it was justified, why are you happy you didn't do it? Rage asked. Because pissing off the royal sisters isn't wise. I didn't think I would face any direct harm from it, but bad things happen to those who earn their ire. Also, I'm probably going to live for a very long time and having that stain on the record between me and Luna would have been awful. I could have asked for her forgiveness later on, but I would have always felt guilty. You would feel guilty, even though it was justified. Rage asked. Truly, you have forgotten me. I don't generally like hurting people. It may feel good in the moment, but the more I look back on the people I've hurt, the less and less I like doing it. The Naga clan was just looking for a place to stay. Maybe I could have talked them into moving in as new residents, to revitalize the old clan home. Calix didn't deserve anything nice, but murder? I could have just sent him home to let Celestia deal with him. It may have been Luna's order but I didn't have to humiliate Shining Armor by tearing out his throat. My actions do affect people, both positively and negatively. At the time, I wanted to hurt Luna. I wanted her to pay for what she did to me. But if I had to go back through this memory and see her suffering because of my actions, it would have hurt me more than a sword ever could. I feel like that's a better takeaway than the one we had prepared, Reason said. Though it leaves me little use or purpose, Rage sighed. Poorly directed rage is worse than no action at all, I said. It's taken me a very long time to realize that. There is nothing wrong with getting angry and using that anger properly. I just need to start figuring out who my real enemies are, so I don't have to worry about hating myself for my choices. At the time, Luna was your real enemy, Reason said. No she wasn't. Celestia held Luna's leash the entire time and allowed everything to happen. Luna was just a lost little child, made to take the blame for disaster after disaster. Luna did make the choices that led to me suffering, but she never would have done it if not for Celestia. That would be akin to attributing all of your good deeds to Discord, Rage said. You just feel guilty about hurting Luna because she's loyal to you now. That, is partially true. How about this, we blame Luna for the specific deeds that she did to me, but blame Celestia for making Luna like that. That's fair, Reason said. But it still involves blaming Luna. Would you feel similarly bad about hurting Celestia? No, because it ended up in a me or her type scenario. If you tack on another hundred or so years to my life, I may look back on this and wonder why I ever felt bad about hurting anybody at all. But right now, I know that if I had gone through with standing Luna up, I would have felt really shitty about it. I guess we can ask for nothing more, my guide said. Are you prepared to move on? Yeah boyo. Her eyes flashed up and we carried on. End of part 2